St. Paul Island. Uh, this Michael guy might have bitten off more than he can chew. Huh, it wouldn't be the first time. He's a leap before you look kind of guy. Uh, I'm guessing you wrote this? I did. Sarah. A maiden. Uh, has he been gone long? Two days now. He hasn't checked in on the radio. It's not like him. He's a little reckless, but not stupid. Something's happened to him. And you two are close, I take it. Not like that, but yeah, we go back. So I worry. Sure. He went to St. Paul Island? Well, I can try to find him. I... Thank you. I'll contact you if I hear anything. Campsite. Looks recent. It could be Michael's. The radio's busted. Maybe that's why he didn't check in. A map. Oh, marks a spot nearby. Maybe I can find some tracks, see where he went. Hello? Is anyone here? Michael? What's with the lights? Hello? Anyone copy? Can anyone hear me? <sighs> Great. You stay the fuck back. You're not getting me. Hey, whoa, easy. Just looking for a guy called Michael. Stay back! I know what you did. I know! Me? Look, I, I just want to find this guy. A woman called Sarah wants him found. Sarah? What are you... She's alive? Of course she's alive. I, I can take you to her. 
If you're Michael. Oh no! It's happening again! What the hell is going on? More rifts, the infection spreads. Is there really no end to it? Interdimensional rifts, that's obviously what they are. It's not obvious. These rifts could be intradimensional or temporal. You are always jumping to conclusions. It's getting weirder and weirder. How dare you? The data is conclusive. They are conduits between dimensions. Doorways, if you will. This is all highly hypothetical. We couldn't possibly confirm any of this without somebody foolish enough to risk exploring them. What the fuck? Uh, Fratin, some kind of perpetually confused vagrant has wandered in through the rift. Get rid of him at once. Let's not be too hasty, Tolga. He has functional limbs and presumably has mastered object permanence. He could be useful. What's your name, friend? My name's Aiden. Where the hell am I? Who are you? I am Tolga, and this is my brother Fatin. Now explain how and why you invaded our workshop. Yes, you must have knowledge of these rifts. Stop talking and tell us what you know! I don't know! I was fighting the infected and then some kind of light appeared. Uh, looked a lot like that, actually. This should not be happening. You! Is this your doing? We need more data about this phenomenon. Fatih, you should examine it. You should examine it. I'll provide support. It's not hurting me. And if it brought me here, maybe... Hey, don't help. touch it! So you two are real. Of course we're real. This is no time for metaphysics. Our workshop is in the office plaza, Horseshoe District. Return to us at once. We must discuss the implications of what just happened. <sighs> All right. At this point, I'm curious enough. I'll be right over. And this time, use the door like a normal person. Be polite, like us. 
Maybe even wipe your feet? Pretend you live in a society? Ha! Society is a construct. It's just rules for the gullible. Precisely. That's why he's a part of it and we're not. <sighs> All right, now let's try this again. What's going on, fellas? We are obviously dealing with an interdimensional breach scenario. These topological distortions are becoming increasingly frequent. Oh, Tolga, look at him. He won't know what that means. He's a simple soul in need of guidance. Explain it in his own language. Yes, of course, you're right. Now, Aiden, imagine you are in your happy place. A slightly urine-soaked cardboard box in some filthy alleyway, perhaps. To you, it seems like a mansion. Yes? You two must get punched a lot. Now, that box is your whole world. But outside of it, there are many other things. And one day, somebody punches a hole through the wall of your box. As the sunlight blinds you, you gibber in confusion because you have never seen it before. All you know is the box and its comforting smells. You cannot cope. And as you cower in fear, unable to deal with the implications of what is happening, new holes appear. To your primitive brain, this is terrifying. All right, yeah, I get it. Holes bad. Get to the point. We need to investigate further. That's why we've prepared these spectral goggles. They will let you see the rifts. As a bonus, they will also obscure your features. Something the rest of us will appreciate. Beyond that, all you need to do is use your core skill. Meaning... You need to touch things. That's it? Just touch the anomalies? See? I told you he would be perfect for the job. So adaptive. Look, the last time I touched one of those things, I almost turned into a stain on a sidewalk. And yet, here you are, except without the data we need. Next time, you'll be better prepared. You're welcome. Now go stick your fingers into things until something interesting happens. Get us that data. Meanwhile, some of us have real work to do. Things get weird out there. Very weird. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that.
back again, Aiden? If it is you... Yeah, of course it's me. Uh, say something only our Aiden would know. I know you guys are kind of dicks. Oh, a clumsy attempt at comedy. It's him. Olga, Fatine, you there? Speak! These other realities, are they really real or just some kind of, I don't know, illusions? Of course they're real. Try to keep your confusion from hampering our progress. Tolga, you have to be gentle with him. You know he yearns for your approval. He's much like a puppy. All the literature says that rewarding correct behavior gets better results than punishment. I suppose you're right. What do you think he would find rewarding? Should we make him a chew toy? You guys realize I can still hear you, right? Oh, Aiden. Our apologies. These radio frequencies can be so... unpredictable. <laughs> Go ahead, Tolga. When you travel through the rifts, what do you see? Please be precise. Uh, flashes of light? Nothing specific. It's more what I feel. A wrenching sensation? And like, for an instant, somebody near me. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but 
It's a powerful feeling. The third man factor, perhaps. Sorry, what? It's a neurological thing. Your body and your brain are constantly talking. If those signals get scrambled, your brain can misinterpret your body's location slightly. So the sensation of another person there is, in fact, you sensing yourself. You're just not used to doing it from outside. That's a real thing? Yes. Or it could be a symptom of significant brain damage. But in your case, how could we really tell? Yeah, okay, I think we're done here. Are you sure? I think I'm kind of good at this. Oh, good. Everyone should experience something new once in their lives. Come back to the workshop. We have a new plan. Uh. 